Today is our last art day of the school year. Boo! Boo. Boo. But that's okay. We're gonna catch up with you here and there over the summer every few weeks and we'll pop in with a new art video for you to do over the summer with your family. Now today we're on an unusual type of adventure right here in your own art teacher's garage. Now, I know you have two questions for me. Why on earth are we in your garage, Mrs. York? And what are we making today? I can't wait to show you. Today, I have a special guest with me. He is very familiar with the inside of a garage. In fact, he worked as a handyman with his father up until he became a world famous painter. Can you guess who that is? Welcome with me, Bob Ross. <laughs> How are you today, Bob? Good. Oh, oh, <laughs> fantastic. All right, are you ready to do some art with my art friends? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Today, Bob is gonna help me create some linescapes. Linescapes. No, Bob, linescapes. Yeah, linescapes. Oh, Bob, all right, sure, whatever. Landscapes. Mm -hmm. Today, you're going to need to gather up some things if you're going to build with us. You're going to need a shoe box or a small box. We used an Amazon box. Not that Amazon ever comes to my house. Or you can use a shoe box or any box that's kind of smaller. It needs to fit in a backpack. And that's about the requirements of it. That's pretty much it. Pretty simple. So you need a box. You're going to need some tape. You can use plain old kitchen tape. You can use clear packing tape. You can use masking tape or painter's tape. Do you have painter's tape in your studio? Yes. Yes. Oh. It's not painter's tape, but cool. Okay. Addy, <laughs> you'll need a small piece of paper. That piece of paper needs to fit in the bottom of your box. Bottom. We'll explain more about where the bottom is later. Wow. You're gonna need any type of felt tip marker or pen. We're using a pen here. We used a, a Sharpie, a metallic Sharpie, and we've also used um, washable markers too. So anything that has a felt tip on it. And you're going to need a piece of string. All right, art friends. Today we're going to create a drawing machine to make those amazing Lionscapes, I was telling you about. Lionscapes. <sighs> Lionscapes. Lionscapes. All right. Anyway, we're going to make a drawing machine. That's why we're in the garage. All right. The first thing that you need to do when you've got your shoebox or your box is stand it upright. So you want to stand it vertical, like this, the tall way. Hot dog. No. Not hot dog. Vertical. Hot dog. <laughs> vertical. Hot dog. Then, if you have a box with flaps like mine, you're gonna tape these flaps open. Hey, Bob, can I have my tape? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, my stars. And makeup! Oh, really, right now? Oh, right, oh, oh, gosh. <laughs> Are we through here? Bob, you're feeling fresh? Yep. All right, anyway, it's never worked in the past. We're gonna take our tape and we're gonna, on this particular box, tape our flaps open. Now, if you have a shoe box, you don't have to do this step because you already have a nice big open box. Because I have flaps on my box, I'm going to tape them open. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, no, I'm not going to sing it. No, oh, oh. Tell me about the last time you painted a happy little tree, Bob. Yesterday. Yesterday you painted a happy little tree. Yep, I used this. Where, where is it? I used this skewer thingy, my bobber. You need to tell the camera. To just do that. Just use this to do that. All right, so we're going to take the flaps of our box open if we have flaps. If you're flappy, we're flappy, right? Then you need to find the center of the top of your box. So what you're going to do is ruler, please. 
Thank you, Bob. Landscapes. <laughs> and you're going to run your ruler diagonal from one corner to the other corner. What we're doing here is finding the center of the top of our box. So I'm just going to take a marker and whoops, follow my ruler, draw a line from one corner to the other. Then I'm going to go the other way on a diagonal. And wherever these lines meet is going to be the center of the top of our box. Now we're going to make a hole right, um, right where the X, where the lines in the X meet. Mm -hmm. And can I use that screw there, Bob? What is this for? That's called a screw. We're going to use it to poke a hole because it's sharp. You can use anything that you have to poke a little hole. Pencil will work. We just happen to be in the garage. Have a garage and that's where you are you might find a screw there this is a very messy garage all right so once you've punched your hole you're going to make sure that it's big enough to feed a piece of string through make a big hole. all right i think we got it so there is our hole in the center of the top of our box here the next thing that we're going to do is prepare our um our pen for the machine and so what you need is your pen that you're going to use. It needs to be felt tip. Um, so that means any marker, um, any uh, Sharpie or felt tip pen will work for this. And you're just going to take a piece of string. And it can't. Any kind of string, thread or yarn will work. You're just going to poke it through here. You're going to wrap it around. Wrap it. Wrap it wrap around it. a bit. <laughs> Bob, would you hold that for me, please? Right. We're going to tape our right. string on so that it does not go anywhere while we are working. Does it have legs? It doesn't have legs? It doesn't have legs. Oh my. Okay. How would it, how would it go anywhere? So you're just going to wrap it tightly right. Right. so that your string is coming out from the top. Okay. And you need a good long tail um, hanging from it. At this point, you're going to take and poke the end of the string through the hole that you made in the top of the box. I use a pencil to kind of help poke it through. However you can get it through is perfect. Once you have fed it through, you're going to have basically a pen on a string dangling through a hole. And what you want to do is line it up so that your pen is standing up. It's leaning on the bottom of the box and it's standing up. Okay, then we're just going to tape that down. And tape your string in place. Now this tape does not need to be stuck down forever because you're going to make adjustments to it. Making You're going to make sure that your pen tip is touching down when you take the cap off. So you might need to adjust the length of your string. So this doesn't have to be sealed down super hard, uh, but hard enough to hold your pen in place. The next thing that you're going to do is get a piece of paper. Oops. And you want to put a little piece of tape. You're going to roll it so that it makes like one of these guys. And you're going to stick it on the back of your paper so your paper doesn't shift around inside of your drawing machine. You're going to slide that paper onto the bottom of the box and center it. Make sure it's nice and in the middle. And stick it down. And it will look something like that. Then you're going to go ahead and take the cap off of your pen. Here's where we start to test our box. Are you ready for this, Bob? Landscapes. Linescape. Landscape. Line. Land. So then what you're going to do, you're going to take the cap off and you're going to test it. Right now our pen is not hitting the paper. This is probably the hardest part of the project is making sure that your uh, pen hits the paper. So you're going to tug it just a little carefully so that it doesn't has a tiny bit more string. And see if now our pen is resting on it. It's not um, laying down. It's still standing upright and you have your drawing machine. Now the way that this works is you're going to take your drawing machine. If you have a shoe box, you're going to go ahead and put the lid on it to keep your machine safe. If you don't, it works still. Um, I like not having a lid because I like to see what my drawing machine is doing as I go. 
Um, you can either set this on the on your lap and go for a ride in the car. Do you like car rides? Where do you like to go in the car? Sonic! She likes to go to Sonic. So you can put it on your lap and ride in the car with it and this pen will move around with the movements of the car and create a piece of artwork based on your trip. You also can toss it in a backpack, which is what we're gonna do today. And we're gonna go for a walk just around our neighborhood. Normally we go on a big hike, but today's more of a neighborhood kind of day, right? And Charlotte's gonna help you with that. Oh, not, Char Charlotte's I'm not, gonna... I'm not gonna be there. Oh, Bob's gotta go, apparently. Where are you headed? Sonic. Sonic, okay, Bob is headed to Sonic. <laughs> and so, where are you headed? Sonic. Bob's headed to Sonic. All right, so we're, we're gonna- some landscapes. Landscapes at Sonic? Okay, well then. So we're gonna put this in a backpack and take it for a walk for you later. Um, but I wanna tell you about how this works. As you take your drawing machine for a walk, you're gonna notice that your machine is creating a circle that is full of lines that basically chart your journey that you're on. So every movement that you make, your pen is making a movement also. That is because your machine is a pendulum. A pendulum is something suspended from a fixed point so that it can swing back and forth under the influence of gravity. Our pendulum is called a spherical pendulum. It is suspended in the middle of space, allowing it to swing in any infinite number of directions. Here are some other artists that use machines to create. Is it art if a machine is the one creating the work? Take a look at this kinetic sand drawing by Bruce Shapiro. The Sisyphus machine automatically creates an incredible intricate sand drawing using magnets, steel marbles, and a computer. There are also pinball prints. The movement of this ink colored sphere is captured on a piece of paper set inside of an old pinball machine. The more skilled the artist or player, the more intricate the piece of artwork. The E. David is a robot that can watch itself working and even make its own corrections upon making a mistake. When E. David finishes his piece of artwork, he even signs his own name. To watch some of these incredible machines, check out the links below. Here are some other cool drawing machines you can make in your own garage. Be sure to have a parent's permission and help. artists we hope that you will try making a drawing machine of your own remember you can experiment try different markers try different pens use several pens see what happens you can even turn your line dot into something afterwards I am so excited to see what you all come up with
Isn't this your, is this your garage? No, this is my cut, garage. Cut, cut, cut. Okay. Cut! I gotta call cut for a second. Peanut butter in a cup, we sing the song to Papa Sock. Please say you're not getting this. Are you getting this? No! Okay, ready. I think I messed up, but you did incredible. <laughs> You did amazing. That's how you made your trees. And then what? Uh, the top of our box. Cut. He's still taping Charlotte. No! Can we, can we go now? Alright. Very sparkly. Come on, Thank I want to get Brenda. this done. Wrap it. Wrap it around Wrap it. a bit. Wrap it. We're going to tape our Wrap string it. on so that it does not go. As you know. Okay, so once you have fed it through. You almost hit me. You almost hit me in the face with that. Well, Bob, sometimes the garage is a dangerous place to be, as you know. Oh, chin! She's, this has gone to her head, I think. Okay. I'm Bob Ross. All right, the first thing that you... Cut. These dogs, seriously? I mean, we've got Fido out here having a episode. Let your dog. Oh! <laughs> no later than February. What just happened there? My hair fell out. Oh. My hair. What's just hair? Okay. Hair and makeup? No. Stop. Why is it every time I want to end one of these, you have more questions? So much bugs out here. to yoga cycle fitness. So tired and fit. We're good. Are you good? Hair and makeup. No more hair and makeup. We are going to